Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. My presentation is I want to tell you about some of the projects that we've worked on to harness uh, waste from banana growing. We've been doing research on this. We started in 2005 and by 2008 we started a European project and we started to see a major step forward in our research. Basically, growing bananas in the Canary Islands, as you'll all know just how important this crop is, according to Asprocan in 2015 we're talking about almost 400,000 tonnes of bananas grown, which is quite a high figure. This was a figure where the figure had grown, this was the year in which the figure had grown against previous years. What we use is the fibre that comes from the pseudo stem of the plant. And we also use the banana leaves from the pseudo stem. As we can see on the right, these are like concentric circles that we separate. And of the outside of the leaf, we take the fibre out of this. These are technical issues that we have to resolve because there are a lot of manual procedures. We use some small machines in some places in the world, in other similar plants, but bringing the fibre out clean and of a high quality is not a simple task. So what we've done is to roll out these projects that I'm going to talk about. Banana fibre, which is what we can see on the right here, is made of, of cellulose basically, which is the main value of the material and to a lesser extent it has hemicellulose and lignin. In some cases we even have to extract this in order to meet the quality standards that we want for the fibre. The f banana fibre is amongst the top of the range of natural fibres. It's, it's above linen and other top of the range. Bacama, badana is similar to a banana. They're very similar plants. And this is what gives the value to this fibre. Traditionally in the Canary Islands, the banana waste has always been used traditionally. It's used for handicrafts, for weaving ropes and strings, in a rudimentary way, but it's a quite a traditional activity here in the islands. When we started working with this material, we were trying to build compound materials. The idea was to uh, replace glass fibre with natural fibre because the European directives are moving towards banning or limiting the use of glass fibre as a reinforcement. So what we want to do is to take a plastic, instead of reinforcing with um, glass fibre for natural for mechanical resistance, we want to replace this with natural fibres. So our first project was this of the seventh framework program that we started in 2009 along with other European partners where there was several stages to this. First of all we wanted to automate the fibre extraction. We developed the machinery and the technology to do this to extract the fibre from the plant. Then using this fibre we would treat this later so that we could manufacture a material that when mixed with plactic would give us a compound that could be processed and used for different processes. More specifically in this project, one of the demonstration products we made was the one we can see here, which is the interior pillar of a Renault Megane. This was manufactured in a company in Burgos, and it's one of the leading manufacturing plants for uh, auxiliary Man, uh, car parts, it's injected plastics which we can see on the, the right. We tested and tried this against all the standards required by the automotive industry and funnily enough it's one of the natural fibres that passed all the tests and, and the glass fibre couldn't. There was one fibre that gave off a smell and there's one very strict standard, the, the, the smell when you get into a, a vehicle that you, you have to meet the standards. So the net, one problem with the natural fibre is the smell. When they're processed, in this case it's an injection process, we increase the temperature considerably. So to, to prevent this 
their smell. And the banana fiber is the only natural fiber that's passed this test, and other fibers such as linen and banana hadn't managed to do. The next project, which we also used a banana fiber, which was also funded by the Ministry of Economy and Competitive Enough, and this was to uh, manufacture cellulose. In this case, we wanted to use banana fiber to manufacture paste for the cellulose, but it's not a cellulose paste to make conventional paper, but to manufacture uh, some kind of special product where the quality of the cellulose had to meet certain standards. In this case, the cellulose paste was used for manufacturing tea bags. It has very special characteristics where the characteristics of the cellulose, uh, the, the, where normally the wood that's used wouldn't meet these standards. This cellulose paste is also used for electronic components. So this, in other words, it's a very specific paste. And here, the value added is the fiber, which is far greater than other applications such as the one we saw before. In this project, we took a quantum leap in the technology for extracting fiber. In fact, we manufactured a full pilot plant right from the start of putting the banana leaves into the machine right the way through to extracting clean fibers at the other end. Another project that we did with the same company we tried to apply the technology that we developed in the previous project in Costa Rica. In this case, we worked with a very similar plant to the banana plant, the avaca, and this we tested all of this in Costa Rica in order to manufacture this cellulose paste. The trials went really well, and the technology that we developed with the banana could also use could be used for this avaca. Unlike the bananas, abaca is a plant that doesn't produce any fruit. It doesn't produce bananas. But in countries like the Philippines, Costa Rica, Ecuador, India, it's a very common plant. Another interesting project that we're still working on, I think it finishes at the beginning of next year. This is a project where we've gone even further. And this is the first time this has been done with banana fiber. We've managed to, to manufacture fabrics because up until then, the compound material that we developed with plastic was with short fibers, but it was not in the form of fabrics. But here, we've managed to make thread, which is a challenge. It's not easy to manufacture thread with any kind of fiber, but we've been able to do this with banana fiber. And this is the, the first uh, balls or royals that we've done. And the idea of this, when you use this for sewing or knitting or weaving for compound materials. And for this case, it's used in the automotive industry. For instance, the door card, the interior card and the doors. This is a compound material comprised of plastic. And then this is ejected on the, um, the fabric with injection plus. And this is quite a, a technological challenge. And finally, I will just finish with a project that has just been uh, approved by this is European Life Project with some other European projects, associate uh, partners, where we've gone even further. What the waste of the waste, i.e. the pulp that you get when you extract the banana fiber, the idea now is also to use that pulp that we when we take the the, the banana X uh, fiber out. So this is going to be develop a compound material. It's an evolution of what we've done to date. And with this pulp, the idea is to manufacture, or part of it is a component for uh, food, fish food, for aquaculture, so that we can feed the fish in aquaculture. So this closes the full circle of the circular economy in this case. We're even using the waste that's produced from uh, extracting the fibers from the banana plant. We're going to have several demonstration products, one of which helps the banana plantation because the bag that covers the, the bananas, anybody who's worked in the sector will have seen these in the plantation to protect the banana from the sun. All of this will be made from the products that we develop in this project. 
and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.